but you turn it around and you select a different organ or a biological entity and place it there. That you know, you men, you have only one. You have only one uh, place of sexuality. Well, every cell in a, in a female's body is a sex organ. It's a, it's a kind of... Um, and in America, it means like um, hugs and kisses. This is very, very interesting because I was at, uh, I used to go to the Marxist literary group, uh, the MLG in Pittsburgh, where it would be maybe five or six times the number of us in here in this, uh, at Carnegie Mellon in this old building. And uh, you know, we had Fred James and you guy had received that you would have. And it was just, you know, and then me and then somebody else, you know, it was just, you know, like me, somebody else. And it was really interesting because they had, at that particular time, they had uh, some people from uh, India, some females from India, and some from China. It was very interesting. And they were talking about uh, Irigara. And it was, so, this is like the, the nature uh, um, uh, um, custom thing, okay? Uh, uh, what is it? Um, Jane Singh kind of thing. And um, the, this Chinese woman said, I just don't. She was talking to all the women. I just don't understand this tulip thing. What's this tulip thing? You know, we don't think that way. Tulips, tulips. I mean, she knew what it was in reference to. Okay, um, the vagina plus. Okay, and then Derrida later picks up invagination. He coins the word. Well, he didn't coin the word, but he was there and started using it. There's a great story about that. A bunch of females, very famous ones, in the audience, and they started writing little notes to each other while he was speaking. What is he doing now? He's taking that from us too, you know, turning us into dairy daughters. <laughs> <laughs> dairy dos, you know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a language game. It's a game with language. Okay? It's trying to find some way to say something different um, uh, in logic. Okay? And so, how can you get it said all at once? It's like being a word or a character. Have you ever looked at? No, I, I've never read, met anybody who said they actually read Finnegan's Way. You look at it. You, know, you look at it, and you look at one word and see the words that are, you know, paradigmatically just resonating as you see it, and then you see the Jason. I was going to bring that up as the paradigmatic example of performative writing. Mm -hmm. There have come both who also in their work. My name is in that in that novel. It's not a novel. It's what's well, the most novel novel? Victor Nianza. <laughs> I'm in there. Lucky you. Special. I am really special. <laughs> You're also incredibly well preserved. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people read Finnegan's Way collectively because of um, so many languages and so much knowledge that he has in there. Um, so I, that's how. Um, is there a readership? I mean, that's this is really important. What you're saying is really important in relation to this because in modernism or in postmodernism, there is no consensus in terms of going to see a play and understanding it immediately. Okay, because there is a loss of audience. There's multiple audiences. So, with, with, with the creation of that book, okay, it, um, which in a sense had to write itself, okay, uh, it did away with all audiences, and then it was si situated in the unconscious mind. Here comes Freud. Though. Here comes Freud. Here comes Freud. You know, here comes everybody. H. C. Earwicker, little Earwicker, you know, inside the ear. Oh, all these here places. Comes here comes Faulkner. Here comes. Yeah. Um, not not trying to take Leotard out of, out of himself, but is there a connection with uh, Michel de Certeau's heterologies? Very much so, yeah. And then I was also thinking, I'm not sure if this is a word in English, but Sarah's concept of the Arlequin? Arlequin? Yes, he, 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 uh, Leotard word? refers to both. They're, they're both, what they have in common, I think we were talking about this the other night, is the notion of um, description in. Um, description and description. 
These are legal terms, folks. When you have, when you're working with prescription, you're working with forgiveness. In other words, you can create a law, but you build in the notion of prescription in it. It's not ultimate, and it is what statute of limitations. At a certain point in time, you will be forgiven. Now there are some laws that if you don't have the statute of limitation, well, what's built in is what the extension of the law. God will forgive you, or somebody's going to forgive you. Okay. But you you went through that with the, the dairy diet. Mm -hmm. Who can forgive? Okay, I think we're out of time. We'll come back and do more systematic. I'll do the systematic thing and go through the book. And uh, when we come back, I'm, uh, I want us to take a look at the opening of this film uh, so we can see the game being played and how the, the, better, the better example is later. Where, because you don't actually see them scan the third party until the one after they've embraced the linear character, because everybody finds out. That's right. That's right. That that you know where it is in here? It's about two thirds of the way through, yeah. and it is fantastic. And it's where they take the guy, they're literally taking the money away from the guy yeah. every time they say a rule. Yeah. And, and everybody else is, you know, the pockets get bigger and bigger. It's a, it's a fantastic little real thing. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you. You know what? what? You want to give me the desk? I'll find it. Yeah. yeah. I'll just go sit in. I thought about where it is. When I saw First time I didn't really get it. It's like, it's really it's just portrayal. Is this good enough? Yeah. 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 You think it's doofiness at first, and then you realize what's happening. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's very, actually, I'm right. It's really scary. Yeah, it's for me. This is better. It's gone. It's not better. economy of his writing of look, the, um, the book, Rubinical Economy, which is more a performance um, than um, it's more a um, figuration and refiguration than it is a discourse. So it's highly performative. And he uses various techniques, some of which you can find in cinema, 
to hold things together. Um, once the, the Mobius band is developed, um, then he sort of trips out. This is a piece of um, hallucinating uh, because there is less and less and less and less negation there to um, Oh, great. Thank you so much. Uh, how do you guys the sense me? Uh, there's less and less negation there to stack things up in some orderly way. The first, second, third, fourth, and so on. With discourse and syntax, that follows very logically with all of the basic logical connectives. But, you know, however, still, you know, additionally, consequently, and so on. Now, that's pretty wild stuff there. Then he uses the kind of thing you find in Memento, that, uh, which is in reverse. And Norris had to um, put in a little documentary in the middle of it that was chronological. So he had it achronological. I mean, you know, it's going backwards, right? Uh, this is the start of the beginning, it goes, in a sense, it goes backwards. Um, which is a wonderful, if, if you wish, to, at least I can imagine it as such. Um, critique of, um, or making fun of, a parody of, let's say that, with all due respect to philologists, of trying to go to the past. You know, to really know what those Greeks were thinking in the 6th century BC, that's just pure fantasy, but I mean, nonetheless, I mean, it's difficult enough if you go, if you're an ethnographer, an anthropologist, and you go to some place and, and work with the, the people, and let's say you learn their language, you still don't know. You just can't even begin to. Um, now I'm exaggerating that some, but anyway, so he puts it, it's he what he does instead of putting a documentary in there is he puts parts of the body in there. It's first a finger. And what he's what he's trying to say is, and we'll go over this in greater detail when we have uh, uh, tomorrow. The the libido is at work manifesting itself as a and it's this <coughs> um, young woman uh, and this man, and you, you wonder, is this not from his uh, uh, repertoire you know, of uh, experience? <coughs> and then it moves from a finger on down words and words later to a hand, if I remember correctly, and then to a face, okay, and then to a face over a face and so on. So he's, He's taking various anatomical uh, parts of the body and stringing them together because it's the libido that is all across the body okay, uh, manifesting itself. And he's writing, talk about writing, equature uh, feminine writing the body, that that's exactly what the libido does. It can give you every possible symptom that's in the medical, um, what is it, diagnostic um, volume, encyclopedias. Okay. You know what lupus is, okay? Mostly women have it, some men can get it, and it can manifest itself in the most invidious and insidious way. Um, because it, it becomes this disease, that disease, this disease, and after a while you begin to think, you realize, some doctors do, they must, there's a dis-ease here. Okay? Um, and it's manifesting itself almost literally across the body. And in the meantime, the woman has had you know, a hysterectomy and so on, all of these things have been done. I mean, I, I knew someone that went through all of that.